Welcome again to Reads Biology. We were discussing about plant kingdom. Today we will discuss about bryophytes. They grow in moist, shaded areas in the hills. They are also known as amphibians of plant kingdom because they can live in soil but dependent on water for sexual reproduction. They are thalus-like and erect plants. They are attached to a substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids. Rhizoids are not true roots. They are root-like structures. They lack true roots, stem or leaves. They may have root-like, stem-like or leaf-like structures. Main plant body of bryophyte is haploid. Haploid means when the chromosome number is half or n. Their sex organ are multicellular. Male sex organ is antheridium, which produce bliflagellate antherozoids. Female sex organ is archegonium, which is flask shaped and produce single egg. Antherozoids are released into water where they come in contact with archegonium. An antherozoid fuses with an egg and produces zygote. Zygote do not undergo reduction division immediately. They produce a multicellular body which is sporophyte. Sporophyte is not free living but attached to a photosynthetic gametophyte and gets nourishment from it. Some cells of sporophyte undergo reduction division which is meiosis to produce haploid spores. These spores germinate to produce gametophyte. Some bryophytes or mosses provide food for herbaceous mammals, birds and other animals. Species of sphagnum which is a moss provide peat that is used as fuel and as packing material for transshipment of living material because of their capacity to hold water. Mosses along with lichens can grow on rocks. They decompose rocks making suitable for growth of higher plants. They also prevent soil erosion by forming dense mat. They helping nature. Bryophyte has two types, liverworts and mosses. First, we will discuss about liverworts. They grow in moist, shady habitats like banks of streams, marshy ground, damp soil, barks of trees and deep in the woods. Their plant body is thalloid. Thallus is dorsiventral and closely appressed to substrate. Their leafy members have tiny leaf-like appendages on stream-like structures. Their asexual reproduction is done by fragmentation of thalli or by formation of specialized structures called gemi in singular gemma. Gemi are green multicellular in structure. They develop in small receptacles which are known as gamma cups located on thalli. Gemi become detached from parent body and germinate to form new individuals. Their sexual reproduction is done by male and female sex organs and these are produced either on sim or on different thalli. Sporophyte of them is differentiated into a foot, seta and capsule. After meiosis, spores are produced within capsule. These spores germinate to form free living gametophytes. Some example of them are Marcantia, Rixia, etc. 
Now we'll discuss about mosses. They are attached to soil through multicellular and branched rhizoids. Their predominant stage of their life cycle is gametophyte. They have two stages in their life cycle. The first stage is protonema stage, which develops directly from a spore. It is a creeping, green, branched, and frequently filamentous stage. The second stage is leafy stage, which develops from secondary protonema as a lateral bud. They consist of upright, slender axis, bearing spirally arranged. Vegetative reproduction is done by fragmentation and budding. Sexual reproduction is done by sex organs, antheridia, and archegonia, and these are produced at apex of leafy shoots. After fertilization, zygote develops into a sporophyte consisting of a foot, seta, and capsule. Capsule contains spores. Spores are formed after meiosis. Mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal. Thank you for watching. Like and share and subscribe by Reads Biology for more videos. Next day, we will discuss about teridophytes. Till then, take care and bye.